Hello everyone, and welcome to the 22nd Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can save our document information in Cocoa. So basically, in the last few tutorials, we've been building up our grades application. In the first one, we just set up this general interface and we talked about the NSRay controller. The second was all about how we could work this in a reference counting environment instead of our um, using garbage collection. So if you want, or if you're interested in how that works, uh, be sure to watch the last tutorial where we're now covering how we're going to use reference counting instead of just garbage collection. So from here on out, you can uh, learn how to reference count your applications uh, as well. So with that, um, like I said, we're just going to be learning how we can save the document information in this tutorial. So essentially what we want to be able to do here is we want to be able to set this up so that our data, which is essentially just our assignments array, which is the NS mutable array with all the assignments, we want to figure out a way that we can save that array. And then when we want to load a file back up, we'll take all that array information and then reset up this window. So that's really all we're really trying to save in this application is just the array because that's actually all of our data for this application. So that's basically all we're trying to do is figure out how we can archive that NS mutable array and then how we can take it back out of a file uh, later on. So that's what we're going to be learning in this tutorial and we'll talk about how we can set up uh, document types and stuff as well. So it should be fun. So the first thing is we should just look at uh, what our top level basically is for what we're trying to archive. So we're trying to archive everything that's in this assignments array basically. So NS mutable array already conforms to NS coding, and that's another point I should make is that if you haven't already watched the NS coding tutorial, which is in the Objective C tutorials, and I believe it's lesson 32, make sure you watch that tutorial on NS coding before watching this because, um, you know, it really, in that tutorial, I explain how NS coding works in full, whereas this tutorial, I'm going to be kind of going a little faster. But uh, again, it's just kind of my spiel that I give every tutorial pretty much at this point that you got to keep up with the Objective-C tutorials. So anyway, um, with that, we have our NS Mutable Array. And again, like I said, it already conforms to the NS Coding Protocol. So it knows how to encode itself, and it will in try to encode all the objects that are within it. So basically how that's going to work is that it has to, any object that's in this array has to know how to encode itself. Now the problem with that is that of course our assignments object does not know how to encode itself because it doesn't conform to the NS coding protocol. So we're going to add that ability right now. So just say in your interface for your assignment class that you're going to conform to the NS coding protocol like this. And that just means that we have to implement two methods that are going to be able to allow us to store any of this information that's in our assignment class. So uh, once we conform like that in the interface, all we have to do now is figure out how we're going to, uh, you know, what two methods we have to do. So we have to implement ID in it with coder, and the second one is void and code with coder. And that's all we have to implement. Those two methods will, you know, basically tell the entire uh, when we go to archive this object, it tells us how to save the data that's in this class, and it'll, how, it'll also tell us how to recreate this assignment object when we take it out of NS data. So, very simple. All we have to do is say a coder encode object for key. The object we want to or encode is our name object. And we'll just set the key to be name. And that's just easy to remember because it's just the instance variable name. Then, of course, we need to encode our int as well. So we'll encode int. Uh, the int is our grade for key grade. And again, this just sets it up so that when we go to take this information back out of the data, we have a way of addressing uh, the key, or we just we can look up the value or the object for whatever key we're given. So it makes our life a lot easier. So another important thing, though, is that if you had the assignments class as a subclass of something that implemented NS coding, you'd also have to call super encode with colo encode with coder colon a coder. So you'd have to add that line of code 
uh, at the top of this method. But since we since we're just uh, subclassing from NS object, NS object doesn't encode with coder. It doesn't implement that. So we're we don't have to call super encode with coder. All right. So that's all good. Um, now our init method works pretty much like just a normal init method does. Uh, if we were to again, if we were a subclass of something else that implemented NS coding, we'd help. We'd also have to say super init with coder colon a decoder. But we're again subclass of NS object it doesn't need to call init with coder because it doesn't implement it. All right. So now the next part, of course, is pretty much just like a normal init method. So we just say name gets uh, a decoder decode object for key and we'll decode our name. Now important thing now that we're working with reference counting you have to remember that you know we're going to uh, have to be aware of what is going on with the memory. So any method for the most part that returns an object is going to be returning an auto released object and that means we have to retain that object if we want to keep it around because this object will return an object that is auto-release, which means it will its retain count starts at one when we get it, but will release itself uh, whenever the NS auto-release pool goes. But anyway, that's a little. If you haven't watched the tutorials on memory management, uh, make sure you do because I'm probably not making any sense otherwise. But basically, uh, we are responsible if we want to keep this object around. We have to retain it because we want it, so we have to retain that object. All right, so the next part is grade, and grade basically is just going to return, or we just have to set it up the same way. We just say decode int for key, and we'll say we want to take out grade. So that's all we have to do for that. And the last part, of course, since this is an init, we just have to return self. So that's all the crucial information right there that we need to work with. Of course, uh, we would just retain this object again because this method will return an auto-released object, which will go away at some point in time. So since we want it, we want to own this object, we have to retain it. And again, grade is just a normal int, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't follow any of these rules. So with that, now we can flip over to our document class and see what we have to implement here. So we have the assignments object that we want to be able to store into data. But the two methods that we want to use to store this, uh, the first one is data of type colon error colon, and that method is going to be used for saving the data because as you can see, it will return an NS data or an object of NS data. So that this method right here is our saving method where we're going to encode our object or archive it. And then the next one is read from data colon of type colon error colon. And basically, all that really means is that um, our uh, read from data will pass in this NS data block, which is the data that is trying to read from the file. So in this method, we just want to take whatever is in that data and then reset up our objects. So uh, basically, let's just start with this method here. So we're just trying to return some piece of NS data. And again, it should be an auto-released piece of NS data because we don't own it. We're just trying to return it. So what we want to do is NS keyed archiver, because we're trying to archive an object, and we'll say archived data with root object. And the object we want to archive is our assignments. So this, the root object is basically the top object that we're trying to archive, and then it will archive everything down. So the assignments object will archive, and then it'll archive all the objects in that, which are all the assignments objects, which then will encode all of the values in the assignments object. So that's basically how this method works. You just take the top object that you want to archive and then it should archive all the information below it. So again this will return a auto-release piece of NS data and that will be returned in this method right here. And this and from here on out you don't have to worry about any of the you know opening a panel to save the information or where it's being saved or anything like that because that's all handled by Coco itself. Uh, it'll open an, it, it will open a panel for you to save all this information and it deals with where it's being saved and everything else. So all we're responsible for is archiving the object, which makes our lives much easier. The next part is just saying that we're going to 
read this data. So when we go to load all this information in, we want to set up that assignments object that we have. So we say self set assignments and NS keyed unarchiver because again we're unarchiving all this information. So we unarchive object data colon data. And again that data parameter that I just passed in there is from this actual method which passes in the data block that it's reading. So this method right here will return an auto-released block of NS data, and of course set assignments will retain it because its um, attribute is to copy it, which will essentially retain it anyway. So you get the idea, and um, just as a side note though, I don't from here on out I'm not going to be talking too much about um, auto-released objects and retaining and stuff unless it's a special case. So if you're not understanding auto-released objects, and retain counts and stuff, make sure you watch the Objective-C tutorials 16 through 18 on memory management. So if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments, but um, from here on out, I'm not going to be talking too much about you know, auto-released objects and why we're retaining them and stuff. So uh, that's just a side note from here on out. Um, I'll, I'll leave that to you to understand because you know I've already taught you this information and I don't want to keep having to reteach it. So anyway, that's what we're doing right here. We're just uh, setting our assignments object up uh, with the data that we get from this unarchive right here. And then uh, the last part is just return yes. And return yes just means the read was successful. We successfully read this data. If you were to fail somewhere with an error throughout here, uh, we could return no, and that would not load the file. And that would be in a case that, let's say your data got corrupted somehow, which can happen, then uh, you know you wouldn't want to read it and you would just say uh, return no and that wouldn't open the file and therefore your application wouldn't crash so it is it is there is a reason that you return yes or return no and uh, just as a side note I know I didn't cover NS error at all and that's because NS error is kind of a special case as you can see it's like a double pointer so uh, what we you know we'll talk about that uh, this code basically in coming tutorials but uh, for right now, I'll leave it, and you can just leave it in, and it won't affect your code. So that's basically everything we need to do for saving this data. And the last part is just saving the actual document into a file itself. So we have to specify what our document type is going to be. So just go into your Xcode project here under your target of whatever your application is. And under the Info tab, you'll see at the bottom that we have Document Types. And document types are basically just uh, the type of document you're going to be saving. So for, you know, if you were to save a Word file, you'd save it in a, some kind of whatever Word exports it as. Like a, I don't even know what the extension is. But if it was like a pages file, it would be like .pages or something. So you get the idea. Um, you would save the document and you just specify all the information that pertains to the document right here, which makes um, our lives quite a bit easier because we don't have to, you know, code this in. So uh, right here, all we have to say is, well, our name for this document, we're just going to call it a grades doc. So this is just like saying a Word document or a, um, you know, a pages document or whatever kind of document that you save. That's basically what this name thing is right here. The class uh, just means what class is going to be saving this information, which is my document. So you can pretty much just leave that because it uh, should be default to, to the class that you create. Um, the extension is just, of course, like a file extension, so GRD, we'll leave it as that. We'll also add an icon to this, so I'll go ahead and define her here, and I've already got uh, this icon that I found basically online, and I just made it into an icon file using the icon composer, so uh, that was in a previous tutorial as well, so if you don't know how to do that, uh, just watch previous Coco tutorial. But anyway, I made this into an icon file, we can just copy it in like this. So I'll say copy items and finish. And then I'll just move this file around just so it's in the proper place. There we go. So now, as you can see, we have a little image for our grades doc here. And that is displayed in the icon section. It's just the file name for the icon. Now the last thing we need to do is talk about the identifier. And uh, basically what the identifier is is just it's something that identifies what your document is, and the format that we the format that we use is reverse DNS format. If I believe, I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. But basically, it's kind of the identifier that Apple uses for 
all Cocoa applications. So you'll notice in your bundle identifier, you have com.lucas. Well, you might not have com.lucas, but you'll have com company name or whatever name you put in there. I just put in my name. And then in this case, for the bundle identifier, it's the name of the application. So the bundle identifier generally works that way. You say com dot your company name or whatever your name is or whatever name you gave it when you started. And then you can say com dot lucas dot and uh, then you can just say whatever you want to call your document. So we'll call it grades doc. And that's all we have to do for that. So that's just basically a general identifier for what your document will be. Now there's one more thing that we have to cover for this which is not generally understood that well. But we have to add an exported UTI. So we have to hit the add button at the bottom right here. Just add an exported UTI. And a UTI just stands for a uniform type identifier. And what this means is I'm just going to set up a few things and I'll talk about it in just a second. But uh, so we have our grades doc. Just basically you want to match this information with your document type up here. So we'll say grades doc. The identifier is going to be the identifier that you put in right here. So com.lucas.grades doc. The icon, you can just select like this. It's the icon that we have in our supporting files. Now, the last, actually, I'll just fill in this grade part here. That's just the extension that might have for this exported UTI. So, a UTI, like I said, is a uniform type identifier. And Apple has created this way that we basically can save our documents as a certain type. And Apple has a whole list of types that uh, basically you can have in Cocoa. And you can form to a specific type for your application. So there's tons of different uh, UTIs. There's things like public.html, which would be like if you were to export an HTML file, or public.txt, which is like a general text file. You could even have more specific, uh, like uh, I think there's I think there's even JPEG, like public.jpeg, if you wanted to say you're exporting a JPEG file. This is where you label what you conform to. So you have to specify what this document is going to export. So even though you could have a different extension for your file, you're still a PDF. So you're still your your piece of data that you're saving is still a PDF file, which is pretty interesting. So anyway, since our application is just saving a piece of data, nothing in particular, we just say public.data. That's what we conform to. And I'll leave a link maybe in the description to uh, Apple's documentation on that, but that's really all we conform to. We just conform to public.data because we're just a data file basically. We don't really, you know, no other application could really open us up. So anyway, let's go ahead and run this now that we've done all this cool stuff. And I already made a file from trying this a hundred times before, but let's make a new one here. So uh, file new, and we'll go ahead and add a bunch of objects here. We'll call this one Sam call this one Yoda. Let's change a grade here to 86. Alright, so now we can go ahead and save this. And you can see you get the little save panel. You can open this up to have more details. You get the idea. So anyway, we'll save this and um, I'll just save it as test. And we'll just save it to the desktop. And now as you can see, we get this test file that's right on my desktop. And, you know, we can add a bunch of things and then save it again and when we quit our grades application and reopen it up you'll see that we get the file back and it's actually located on our desktop and I'll show you that right here we have right in the bottom right that test file and you can see the icon goes with it too which is pretty cool so there we go uh, that's basically all we had for uh, opening and loading files you can see that you get the open panel as well where you can specify exactly what file you're going to open and you can also open recent if you want. So you can open one of the recent files that you had. So you get all this cool stuff for free just by saying this data that you're saving. So Coco's pretty cool that way. And uh, anyway, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you next tutorial.